Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we've got a bit of a different review. I don't normally do the uh, standard Cyberverse toys anymore for reviews, but uh, this one caught my interest. Thought it was very cool looking, both the packaging and what's inside. So today we're going to review the Transformer Cyberverse Quintesson Invasion set. Now, so far, these have only shown up at Targets here in the U.S., though they're not marked as a Target exclusive, so verdict's still out on that one. And they seem to be uh, part of a pair, because there's another set that falls under this little subline, Cybertronian Villains, and that's one that has like a little one-step changer hot rod along with these three little mini Sharkticons that are roughly like Titan changer size, you know, those little simple things. Wasn't really keen on picking that one up, just a little too simplistic for me. This set, however, features an all new Quintesson mold. So this is the first proper Quintesson toy that we've received um, ever, at least, you know, officially. It's got some third party outings. And then it also comes with this Shockwave and Prowl toys. Now these two figures are identical to their uh, little armor up versions. They're all spark armor uh, versions. But now they come with these little mind control helmets you can place on top of their heads. So I'm not crazy about that fact. This is a $30 set. And to buy two figures that are already available that I specifically already have, you know, made it kind of a tough sell, but at the end of the day between the packaging, the new little cool helmet things, and then the Quintesson itself decided to cave. So if you see my reviews, you know how this goes. We're gonna take a look at the packaging. We're gonna see the instructions that come with this. Then we'll look at the figures themselves. I'll be doing transformations for Shockwave and Prowl because I never did reviews for their AllSpark armor counterparts. And then at the end of the video, I will give my final thoughts. So I keep mentioning this packaging. You can see it's done up in this just really nice dark blue and gray color scheme with like some gold highlights here. Very cool. And I guess that's all part of this little Cybertronian villains aesthetic that they have going on. And it's got me curious, you know, I'm hoping they do more with this rather than just the two sets. I'd like to see what other creative things they can do. Because Cyberverse is a very hit or miss toy line. You have some toys that are quite impressive. You have some that are like bargain bin junk. Luckily, this set seems to lean more toward the former. Turn this to the side. It's got a picture of the Decepticons. Kind of lazy, if you ask me. Uh, you got our renders of our guys. It takes 13 steps to transform Shockwave, only eight to transform Prowl. Shows how the helmets are removable. Shows you how to switch this guy's heads here, his faces. Over here, now this is where we get the actual new artwork. You got the Quintesson itself. You got our two mind control guys, which I'm pretty sure these drawings here are just reuses of their regular artwork. And they just have the helmets superimposed over. And let's see, anything on the bottom? No, yeah, nothing special. All right, time to open this. All right, and here we have the instructions, which are done up in this very cool dark gray and like a golden yellow color. And it actually has some uh, ancient Autobot text down here on the bottom. So that's interesting. You know, a little bit of crossover with the Siege toy line. Here in the front part, you have uh, how to remove Prowl's little control helmet from his head, and then how to transform him to his vehicle mode. And on the flip side, same thing for Shockwave, helmet removal, transformation. And then right here shows you just how to move the faces around on the Quintesson. All right, we're gonna start with Prowl's transformation. Fairly straightforward and very reminiscent of other Prowl figures. So right here we're gonna pull his arms up out from under his vehicle mode there. And we're gonna swing his car doors out like so. Flip these shoulders out. And then bring all that down like that. Now for his Rear end here, probably not the best choice of words. Just flip it out, separate the halves. Now you get his arms positioned correctly, so just wanna swing him around like 
this. Put that little panel back. And there you go. This is Prowl's uh, just standard robot mode. And you know, it's a pretty decent representation of him at a small scale. Uh, it takes a lot of engineering cues from his uh, warrior class toy. And overall, you know, pretty impressive. It's got a lot of five millimeter ports to support uh, different accessories, uh, especially the uh, all spark armor that this mold was originally designed to accommodate. And what's you know interesting, kind of clever, is that these holes were originally made for that armor, for like the helmet part, but they've been repurposed for this version of the toy to accommodate his uh, mind control helmet. Now, at first glance, these might look identical, but they are a bit different in design. You can see kind of how like these top uh, red circles go further back on this helmet and all that. And the important part is how they look on the inside. And I believe this one is the one that goes on Prowl. So it actually does matter which one that you uh, use because they, won't, they uh, won't fit on the other guy. So you just press it down there and there you go. This is your mind control Prowl. And it's pretty cool looking. And you know, the, the black and red of the helmet really match his, uh, you know, his color scheme. So that's neat. All right, next up we have Shockwave in his little spider tank thing mode. And you know, this has been his consistent alt mode throughout all the Cyberverse, which is you know, unique to Cyberverse. So his transformation, little less straightforward than Prowl's, a little more complicated. Uh, so basically you start by just completely removing his cannon from both ends here. So you're gonna straighten his legs out Turn them around at the thigh swivel, like so. I'm gonna swing this part down, and then swing his upper body forward like that. Bring his head out, swing his little backpack section back up, and then you just readjust his arms. You know, drop him, swing him around, put him in a more natural position. Now this is his basic robot mode. And one thing that's very cool that you might notice is that he actually has two hands, which is uh, a first. This uh, all spark armor mold for Shockwave was the first one that really actually incorporated two hands. Uh, his ultra class version came really close. It actually had like an extra arm that tucked away inside of his robot mode and then got replaced with like his cannon arm. But the extra arm just had like a flat stub instead of a, a separate hand molded in, which I you know, thought was a really missed opportunity there. So this guy was the first one to do it. And the new deluxe class, who I have yet to review, but it will be soon, um, he also does this. So very cool. I'm glad you have the options of displaying them with and without. However, for your more traditional shockwave look, you just plug the cannon into his hand like so. And bring this around and plug it into his shoulder. And not too hard to get in there. So shouldn't have to worry about breaking it or anything, even though it's a very soft, rubbery plastic. And yeah, that is the completed robot mode. And you know, just screams classic shockwave, you know? It looks very, very cool. Great for a small scale toy. Um, lacks the head articulation like most of the Cyberverse toys do. And then here is his mind control helmet, which slides right down, just like Prowl's does. And there you go. Uh, looks a little wonkier on him, just because it makes his head look huge and doesn't match you know, the color scheme, but it's still cool nonetheless. And here's a big group shot of Shockwave along with his Warrior Class, Ultra Class, and Spark Armor variations. And uh, you can see they're very samey. Uh, they recycle a lot of the engineering between them. Uh, the biggest departure from that is probably the Ultra Class, where you know I mentioned he's got like the whole extra arm thing going on. Uh, and I, I will say, I've kind of said this before, but uh, you know Shockwave has been the most consistently good toy out of the Cyberverse line. You know anything below like a you know like a one step or something with this character has been pretty high quality, at least, you know, for the standards of Cyberverse. Then here we have Prowl. You can see he hasn't gotten quite as much love as Shockwave has. You know, 
picture here are the warrior class toy and the uh, spark armor toy. And like I said, the engineering between these three is, or I guess two molds really, uh, is almost identical. Obviously the bigger one has some more articulation. He does have the flip down shoulder cannons, but overall, yeah, they're very close to one another. All right, now here we have the centerpiece of this set, the Quintesson itself. And this is based off the Quintesson Judge design that first debuted in the original Transformers movie. So he has a whole bunch of these tentacles here, which act as, you know, a stand for him. However, he does have four articulated tentacles, two on the front, two on the back, are on ball joints, so you can move them around, pose them however you want, which is very cool. And then his heads can be switched by pressing this button down, like I already showed. So just hit it, boom. And these are very cartoony takes on the original head designs, and some, you know, follow more closely than uh, others. But overall, it is a cool feature. It's, you know, this is a toy that people have been wanting for a long time, which at this point could only be upstaged by, you know, possible Voyager Earthrise release that we totally don't know about, guys. And then finally, here's our look at the completed set. So you can see our Quintesson here with his two mind-controlled minions. And, you know, for 30 bucks, this is a really fun little thing to get. And, you know, kind of a surprise. I didn't think Cyberverse was ever really going to go this far with, you know, the quality, you know, multi-packs and stuff. So I think this is a good thing. Now, again, because of this very likely... Uh, Earthrise Quintesson we're gonna get might make this toy a little obsolete but if you don't mind having extra Quintessons in your collection or you really like collecting Cyberverse and their aesthetic it's gonna be good for you so you know my recommendation I think this is worth picking up between the very cool packaging uh, the really neat repurposing of existing molds you know addition of these new accessories and the Quintesson itself I think 30 bucks is a, a fair price to ask, and if you happen to run across one of these at your target, I'd pick it up. It's a lot of fun. Of course, that is just my take on the set. Perhaps you feel differently. Do you think this toy is worth getting? Are you holding out for the Earthrise one? I'd love to hear all your comments down below. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you are enjoying these reviews. If you want to see any of my other reviews or any other videos that I make, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me in taking this look at the first official Quintesson Judge toy ever made. And with that said, I will see you next time.